11th chapter, verses 28 through 30, hear these words. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So I wonder for you what it feels like to follow Jesus. At times I think we've turned following Jesus into something other than it was designed to be. At times I think we've turned following Jesus into a bit too much just rules and regulations. That if you follow these rules or these laws or these things, then you're in. Right? You're a Jesus follower. But if you break these rules, these laws, these things, then you're out. We've reduced the adventure, life-giving joy of following Jesus to rules and regulations. I grew up in South Georgia. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. So down in Savannah, there was this saying that it was almost so if, if you, there was this saying, don't smoke, don't drink, don't chew, don't go with the girls that do. And if that's you, <laughs> right, if you can fulfill that, <laughs> then you're a Christian. You're in. But if you break that, you're out. Right? When following Jesus is so much more than that. I, at the last church, there was a, a youth. He, was a, he ended up a neighborhood kid who um, was walking around the building. And some folks, we approached him and said, why don't you, why don't you come on in? Come on in. Um, let, us show, let us show you the sanctuary. Let us show you uh, the building. Let us show you the space. And he said, no, 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 no. I can't. I cannot go in there. It's like, well, why not? How come you can't? Why can't you come in here? And he said, if I go in there, I'll, I heard that I'll burn up. I was like, well, we need some new press for one. But I was like, why do you think that you burn up? He goes, well, my family's not together. I get in trouble in school. I like to say curse words. I said, welcome to the club. But you are welcome here. That somewhere along the way, he had got it in his mind. And he had some, someone had convinced him to believe that he wasn't welcome in the family of God because he didn't fit this tight rules and regulations. He thought since he got in trouble at school, since sometimes he said some bad words, he wasn't welcome in the family of God. And I'm afraid that at some times in the church, we've reduced, we've reduced the life-giving adventure of following Jesus, of being a Christ follower, simply to some rules and some do's and don'ts, when it's so much more than that. Similarly, I think that at times, even here in the church, we've been guilty of reducing, again, following Jesus to a list of to-dos, a long to-do list, do your quiet time, make sure you're in your worship, usher, volunteer here, volunteer there, bake this, bake that, bring this, bring that, right? It's this long to-do list that if we feel as though we don't check off all those boxes, then it can be tempting to believe that, that we're not a good Christ follower. When I was growing up, I had a bit of that in me that if I didn't feel as though I had this per- perfectionist sort of gene in me where I didn't feel, if I didn't feel as though I got everything right or did everything right or spent all my time right, I felt as though I was less than, that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't worthy. When following Jesus, being a Jesus follower is so much more than that. And we read in our scripture this morning, Jesus says, come to me, all you that are tired, All of you that are carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. Does anybody this morning crave rest for their soul? I want to read this verse for you again. It's become one of my sort of go-to life verses. Come to me, all you that are weary, carrying heavy burdens, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to unpack a little bit of what Jesus was talking about as he said this in uh, the middle, sort of Matthew's gospel. A yoke. You know, we don't use the word yoke too often in our sort of daily language. We don't use that word yoke too much. But a yoke back then had a couple of meanings. And one meaning a yoke had was different rabbis had different yokes. So a yoke back then was an interpretation of the scriptures or an interpretation of the law. So some rabbis had had one yoke or one interpretation of the law, while other rabbis had a different yoke or a different interpretation of the law. Now back then, at, at this 
day and time that Jesus was speaking, there was a particularly harsh interpretation of the law. There was a particularly harsh yoke that folks lived in and lived under. Um, well, if you were to keep reading, and I would encourage you, if you get home and you want to keep reading through Matthew, um, the verses immediately following this one, we see that harsh yoke or that harsh interpretation of the law play out. There was this group called the Pharisees, and the Pharisees in the scriptures, at least in the Gospels, they were plotting to try and trick and trap Jesus, and they were known for having a particularly harsh interpretation of the law, of reducing you know, God's law, God's story to you know, a list of do's and don'ts of rules and regulations. It had become very legalistic. And if you couldn't meet this incredibly high standard, if you couldn't keep every single law, then you were out. And the people of Israel, the people of God, were living under this, this harsh interpretation of, of what it meant to be a person of God. And if you were to keep reading, we see that at play. For Jesus, as soon as he says these words, apparently it's a Sabbath day, and Jesus goes on, and he's with his disciples. His disciples are following him like good students would follow their rabbi. And they're following him, and they're starving, they're hungry. And Jesus plucks some wheat in order to be able to, to feed his disciples. And in that moment, the Pharisees see him pluck that wheat, and they say, whoa, 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 don't you know the law, Jesus? Like, you can't work on the Sabbath. Plucking that wheat to provide for those disciples constitutes work. So you are outside the bounds of the law. Like, don't you know you're in sin, Jesus? And Jesus says, you, you guys have got it all wrong. Jesus says, you've got it all wrong. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And he goes on to say, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And then, if you were to keep reading the next verses, he continues along his way, and Jesus comes across a man with a withered hand, right? A man who's in need of healing. He's crying out to Jesus for healing. And the Pharisees are watching him, Again, and Jesus decides to heal that man. And again, they say, you can't heal that man on the Sabbath day. That constitutes work. Again, you are not fitting into the law. You're not fitting into what we believe as the people of God. And again, Jesus says, y'all have got it all wrong. And the scriptures say at that very moment, after they've seen Jesus you know, work on the Sabbath, they went out and conspired against him about how to destroy him. So Jesus this new rabbi came with this new yoke. This new yoke that he says was easy and light. He goes, lay down your burdens, for my yoke is easy and light. And Jesus was talking about a fresh interpretation of the scriptures. I mean, you can see that it was harsh. If hungry people can't be fed and if sick people can't be cured on the Sabbath because it constituted work, that's a harsh interpretation of the law. And Jesus is telling his followers, it's not about that. You know, you've, we've lost our way. And this new rabbi, Jesus, says, you know, the Sabbath is a gift. And they turned this gift given by God. Last week we talked about how we were created for Sabbath. Like we are created to rest. That God modeled it. God commanded it. And it was a gift from God, the gift of the Sabbath. Yet it's, we humans have taken a gift and turned it into a burden. And those Pharisees had turned the gift of the Sabbath into a burden. And Jesus is saying... My yoke is different. My interpretation is different. What it means to be a, a child of God is different than fitting in this tight sort of rules and regulations. It's more than, than legalism. When Jesus was asked about his yoke, what's most important about your interpretation? Jesus said, about your interpretation of the law. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now, not easy to do by any means. But it wasn't harsh. It was freedom that Jesus was offering. Now this verse, some of you may have heard of Eugene Peterson's uh, paraphrase of the scriptures called uh, The Message. And I love the way that he paraphrases these scriptures in Matthew 11. He puts it this way. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And I love the way he puts that. Does anybody feel tired? <laughs> feel exhausted? Does anybody feel burned out on religion? Could anybody use rest for their souls this morning? 
Maybe you could, re- you could use rest from a harsh interpretation of the scriptures. Maybe following Jesus for you has felt like jumping through hoop after hoop after hoop. Living into a set of rules and do's and don'ts that you could never fully get right. If you're feeling that this morning, you know, lay that down. Lay that burden down and accept Jesus' invitation to live freely and lightly. Or maybe you've got that perfectionist gene in you. And you felt like you've never been enough. You've never been enough for Jesus. You didn't pray enough. Didn't do enough quiet time. Didn't volunteer enough. Didn't say all the right things. Lay that down. Jesus says, walk with me. Learn to live freely and lightly. Allow your soul this morning to rest in the presence of Jesus. I believe when you come to church on Sunday, we call this a sanctuary, right? It should feel peaceful. (laughs) I pray this morning that you experience some measure of peace in this sanctuary. Because maybe you've come this morning and you feel just worn down by life, by the church. I see it on y'all's faces sometimes. You barely make it in here. (laughs) You look exhausted. You've tried to get the kids here or there. You've lost your religion on the way to church, trying to get those kids to church. I know how it is. You should have seen my wife's face when she walked in this morning. I was like, she's over it. (laughs) She needed some rest. (laughs) Right, maybe you've come in this morning and for whatever reason, life has worn you down. Maybe for whatever reason, church has worn you down. You know, hear Jesus' words again. Come alongside me. Walk with me. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love that phrase, the unforced rhythms of grace. Last week, we talked about Sabbath. And I think a first step to learning those unforced rhythms of grace is to have a healthy practice of Sabbath, right, of taking that gift that God gave us to stop, to stop accomplishing, to stop doing more and more and more and more, and to simply be, to be a human being rather than a human doing, right, to rest in the presence of God and allow God to to restore you and to renew you and recreate you. So this morning, I want you to, if you weren't here last week and you didn't already start, I want you to begin planning some sort of rhythm of Sabbath for your life. Right, what would it look like for you to truly take seriously the commandment to Sabbath, to stop, to rest, to allow God to, to remake you in his presence? Now, I've got a friend that always told me that Sabbath, their Sabbath rhythm, was one hour a day, one day a week, and then one week a year. So that's one hour a day, one day a week, one week a year, completely devoted to Sabbath, to rest, to renewal, to recovering reverence for God. What would it look like for you to build that into your rhythm, right? An hour a day, whether it's the beginning, middle, or the end of the day, just to reconnect and to hear from God, to give God thanks, to be made new. One day a week where you just stopped, stopped and allow God to, to refresh you. One week a year devoted, not maybe it is simply vacation, but I I love vacations that in some way connect you back with creation, with with the creator, that connect you back if you've got a family as a family. What would that rhythm look like for you? And if you are able to spend a day a week, what would that day look like? Right, I know that it always helps me to have some examples. So a couple of examples from friends that I've always appreciated were I had some friends who what they would do, it was a little too formal for me, but I love the idea. Um, I would love to get in the rhythm of this. They would light candles at sunset on Saturday night. And they'd get their little kids, and their kids would help them light these candles. And it comes from sort of a Jewish tradition. They would light these candles to mark the entire next day as different, as holy, as set apart. So the kids knew that when they lit those candles, the next day was going to be different. And what they would do is they would take a technology fast for the whole day. So no TV, no computer surfing the web. No phone surfing the web. They devoted that whole next day to reconnect with God and to reconnect with one another as a family. And those candles just helped them mark that day. Now, I like it because I could see that, that kids could learn from that, pick up from that, see it modeled, and maybe they'd continue a Sabbath practice as they got older and older. So what would a Sabbath day look like for you? I've got another friend who what they would do is they would mark the day as a day of hospitality for them For them, connecting with friends and family members around a meal, around a table, was renewing. 
was refreshing, was recreating. Uh, there's a quote where they said, um, it be, the meal becomes sacred, sacramental, right? The way that food and hands and friendship all work together in the warmth of a kitchen. So maybe part of your Sabbath is just re- finding ways to reconnect with friends and family members in a way that, that restores the joy of your salvation. But I know for me, when I think about some of the most refreshing or recreating times in my life, it kind of doesn't get better than a long extended meal with best friends where laughter abounds. So what might a day of Sabbath look like for you? I'd encourage you to go home and and make plans, because if you aren't intentional, it's not going to happen. And I think observing the Sabbath is the first way we can start to learn those unforced rhythms of grace. So this morning, receive the invitation from Jesus to live freely, to live lightly. I mean, almost every other area of our life, we're used to this race of accomplishing more and more and more, of being busier and busier and busier, of hustling here, hustling there. In essence, almost every other area of our life, we're used to having to earn it, having to, to earn something. And the gift of Jesus, the gift of grace, is that it is not earned. It can't be earned. I think that's why so many of us struggle with it. It's because in this day and age in our culture, it doesn't make sense. Right? It's why the Pharisees wanted to create this legal system of do's and don'ts, because it made sense. If they did this, did this, did this, then it would earn it. But the grace of Jesus Christ cannot be earned. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many rules you follow, no matter how many hoops you jump through, no how many checks you check off on your to-do list, the grace of Jesus Christ cannot be earned. Jesus says, keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. And don't get it wrong, that doesn't mean a life of following Jesus is easy. Right? A life following Jesus is anything but easy. It's a life that will involve sacrifice, a life that will involve service. It's a life that will involve risk and challenge. It's a life that will set you apart from the larger culture. It's anything but easy, but it's a life that's free. It's freedom. It's the life, as Paul puts it, it's the life that is truly life. It's a life that is yoked to mercy and grace and forgiveness. So this morning, if you are tired, If you're exhausted, I'd invite you to stay close to Jesus, to learn those unforced rhythms of grace. Maybe you've come this morning and you're carrying something heavy, a heavy burden of of whatever sort. Maybe this church thing, for whatever reason, started to feel heavy. Lay it down this morning. Allow Jesus to give you rest for your soul. Maybe you carry that burden of feeling as though you aren't enough or you aren't worthy, that you have to do more and more and more, in essence, that you have to earn it. Lay that belief down. In Jesus, you are worth it. In Jesus, you are more than enough. So as we head into a time of prayer, I want to read these these words for you again. Let's bow our heads. I invite you to just hear these words again and allow them to refresh your soul. Jesus is inviting you. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Loving God, we confess that we've made following you into something other than it should be. God, we lay down all those heavy burdens we've taken on. God, we lay down the the desire or the temptation or the need to have to earn it. And God, this morning we want to receive your grace. For you are a God that is gracious, a God that is slow to anger, a God that is abounding in steadfast love. Lord, this morning we pray that we would take serious the gift of Sabbath. Lord, that we would sit apart time in our day, time in our week, or to receive your blessings, or to receive your word, to, to hear again your voice that whispers in our ear that we are enough in you. For it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.
The altar will be open during our closing hymn if it would be helpful for you to come forward and, and lay any of those burdens down. But I invite you to stand and join me in our closing hymn.